Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another edition of Tornado Talk. We're here on Monday nights at Dugan's Pub, 29 West French Broad Street in Brevard, North Carolina, where we talk all things Brevard College athletics. Got an exciting show on tap tonight. We'll be talking men's and women's basketball and also introduce you to new head coach of the Brevard College softball program, Robin Rohr, later in the show. Do want to thank our sponsors, Arby's, Jets Pizza, Holiday Inn Express, Hampton Inn, Ingles, Mission Sports Medicine, Comporium, Pepsi, and the home of Tornado Talk, Dugan's Pub. Before we get to our first guest, the man on my left, head coach Lee Burgess, do want to catch you up on a, some news around Brevard College Athletics. First, earlier today, the new climbing coaching staff was named at Brevard College, a three-person staff led by head coach Dan Horn, along with assistants Taylor Simpson and Anna Morgan. So an exciting addition to the Brevard College climbing program, the coaching staff named earlier today. You can check out the story at bctornadoes.com, and it is concurrent with a continual partnership with Brevard Rock Gym and Coach Horn, Coach Simpson, and Coach Morgan, all part of the coaching staff at the Brevard Rock Gym and bring just a wealth of experience to the Brevard College climbing program. Women's basketball, a win last Wednesday at the Bosch, 66-44. Shakira Thompson, a career best seven made three-pointers, the second highest total in three-pointers in a single game in school history with 21 points to lead the Tornadoes in that win. And then an overtime win in Macon, Georgia, 66-56 over Wesleyan this last Friday night. We'll be talking to Shakira Thompson later in the show along with senior Krista Davis and head women's basketball coach Donald Hudson and coming up next for women's basketball tomorrow if you're watching or listening to this show live so Tuesday January the 14th 6 p.m. at the Bosch Tornadoes will host Maryville and then Saturday this Saturday at the Bosch come on out 2 p.m. women's basketball versus Berea that brings us to men's basketball and glad to be joined now as always, during basketball season, head men's basketball coach Lee Burgess. Yeah. Coach, thanks for joining the yeah. show. Glad to be here. Well, Coach, a 71-65 loss last week to Berea. Yeah. And so do want to catch folks up on that contest in case they weren't able to tune in to the live stream. Uh, can you kind of sum it up, you know, from your perspective, uh, how that game transpired? Yeah, we we got off to a really, really poor start. I think Berea got up on a 16-2, to two, I believe. Um, <coughs> and uh, we clawed our way back and um, <coughs> had the game in, in decent shape at halftime and um, just felt like we were running uphill the whole game. Um, the, the, you know, what I've tried to get across to our guys, because there, the, and I'll get into them here in a minute, there were some circumstances around the trip that kind of I think can lend itself to making some excuses, and I really don't want our guys to do that. We, we've got to our hold ourselves accountable for how we played. Um, there were times when I thought Berea played harder than us, and uh, that was disappointing to see. Um, you're not always going to uh, shoot the ball well. Sometimes you will, sometimes you won't. Um, but um, I don't believe a team should ever play harder than us, and I thought Berea did that at times. Um, but it, yeah, it was a tough trip going up there. So our bus broke down um, on the way headed up to Berea. And so um, we uh, we had to wait a little over an hour to get a, a replacement bus up there. They delayed the start of the game, and um, you know we we went through a pretty abbreviated warm up. Um, and uh, you know I think that can factor in kind of getting out of your routine a little bit for for a slow start. Um, but um, we had plenty of time to get that right. And, you know, we had, were coming off a game against North Carolina Wesleyan, the biggest team in our league, uh, where we gave up 11 offensive rebounds. It felt like all 11 of them were in the first three minutes of the game, but evidently it was 11 offensive rebounds for the game. And we gave up 14 against mm. Maria. And um, I think a lot of that just goes to, to, to just our effort, willingness to just, you know, get out there and be physical with them like, like we know we can. Uh, we did not shoot the ball well um, against Berea. Uh, we turned it over too much, and uh, unfortunately those things, you know, happen sometimes, um, but the, the more disappointing part to me was I felt like we got outfought at times. Uh, so even with that, you know, it's a four-point game with two minutes to go. Um, and we had the ball, and we turned it over twice in a row um, in, the, in, in, in our next two possessions. And so, um, 
Again, we came up short and uh, disappointingly so, uh, but really, really tried to, to imprint, you know, on our guys in our film sessions and afterwards that uh, this is not a throwaway where we can just say, hey, we had a rough trip and, and that's what caused it. There, there, were, there were some things that, that we certainly could control that, that we didn't do a good enough job controlling. Would like to kind of take a view, stepping back a little bit, and talk about a milestone that was hit in that contest, which was Levi Lamb, the uh, sensational senior for the Brevard College Tornadoes, became the program's NCAA era leader in career three pointers made. Um, you know, he made his 124th career long range bucket. Um, to go to the top of that list. And he's approaching now the 1,000 point mark, yeah. uh, which is uh, a difficult milestone for anyone to um, you know, attain. And that could happen uh, very well tomorrow. Levi Lamb, we've yeah. talked about him before on the show, but just kind of big picture, you know, what kind of player he's been, you yeah. know, through his years well, here. Well, first of all, we need him to get that tomorrow. If he, he, I think he's four points away. So if he doesn't get the 1,000 points tomorrow, we're going to be in trouble in that game. So hopefully he does get it tomorrow. Um, and, yeah, I mean, Levi's closing uh, closing out. There's, I mean, half the season is left, so we're not quite at the end of it yet. We're, we're halfway through this last chapter. Um, but he's starting to rack up some, some pretty significant and special accolades. And, um, you know, Levi ha has come in and, and stayed working hard. And his role has just grown and grown through the years. And he is the unquestioned leader of our team right now um, and uh, has really grown into that role. But uh, from his freshman year, when he came here and got some, um, you know, some minutes uh, here and there and some, you know, got a little bit more, some more minutes towards the end of the year and then to a, you know, pretty expansive role as a sophomore and now junior to senior year has, 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 has just continued to grow. So uh, he's worked hard. He is constantly in the gym. He is, and what he's done really well this year is, and last year really taking young guys under his wing, make sure they've gotten in the gym with him um, just to kind of pass that along uh, to them. Hey, this is, this is how you work. This is how hard you need to work. Um, you know, and if you work this hard, then, you know, good things will happen. So uh, really proud of him. Um, talked to him the other day just about um, you know some of the things that, that were coming his way from an individual standpoint and people are certainly going to remember um, you know your time here for sure um, but they are going to remember most you know how you leave and so we want to make sure we just continue to put that good foot forward here down the stretch here uh, let him and, and the rest of these seniors leave on a really really good note because um, <clears throat> you know during during this this period where Levi's been here and he can't control the timing of all this with the transition that we've had going on it's been you know a tough road his first year here we were still competing division two under division three model and we won two games and um, yeah, that's a really hard thing to mm. endure and continue to put forward the effort to make yourself a, a, a good player and keep the team together and he's fought through that and through this you know this whole transition here and um, you know has has stayed really trying to make a really positive impact on the team and the program which I'm really appreciative of well now Brevard College is all-time three-point king and as you mentioned coach um, in all likelihood, tomorrow at Covenant, uh, we'll go over that 1,000-point mark. Stay tuned to Brevard College Tornado social media. We'll try to get you that news as soon as it happens. Now, tomorrow, 7.30 p.m., a trip to Lookout Mountain, Georgia, versus a formidable Covenant squad. They're 5-0 and in the conference, 8-4 and overall. Mm -hmm. uh, Coach, if you can shed some light on perhaps the game plan for Covenant. Yeah, well, really good team. I mean, um, ran away with our side uh, of, of the conference last year and have – basically everybody back um, save their starting point guard. Their starting point guard graduated. They replaced him um, with a really good player, uh, a, tra a guy who transferred down from uh, the Division II level. And so really, really talented team. Um, you know, they know their roles and do their roles extremely well. They have a big player, uh, post player, Will Crumley, um, who's really good around the basket and skilled on the perimeter, but a 6'9". It has really, really good size. Um, and then Chris Barnett is their point guard um, that they've, they've had transfer in. And he's actually their leading scorer at, at 18 points a game and is a really good player off the dribble. And, um, you know, it's a team they're going to try to they, – they, they don't have a lot of gaps. I mean, 
Barnett is really good off the dribble, so they've got guys that can break you down that way. They've got a post presence in, in, in Crumley around the basket and can alter shots defensively. And then the, the, the three other guys that are in their starting lineup are all you know really, really good shooters. And so um, they can hurt you a lot of different ways. So uh, we got to really be in tune to our scout and our personnel of, of, of who, we're, who we're guarding at that time. Um, you know, we're going to try to do some things to limit Barnett's ability to get all the way to the basket. Uh, we're going to try to do some things to limit their their, their post-passing vision uh, on the perimeter because they are going to really search that out hard to try to get Crumley the ball. We don't have anybody 6'9 on our team. That's not going to change between now and tomorrow. Um, so we're going to do our best down there to try to limit his touches around the basket when he does catch, uh, really try to pay attention to, to what we can do with him. Um, but that's, uh, that, that's going to be a challenge. They're 5-0 and in the league for a reason. They were picked to win our league for a reason. It's a really good team. But, um, you know, like I talk about with our guys, in my mind, while we have to pay attention to personnel, we have to pay attention to strengths of the other team, uh, we're always more conscious about us. And what are we going to try to do to expose them on on their defensive side of the ball when we have the ball on offense? What are we going to try to do on defense to make them uncomfortable? Um uh, for us to be successful and uh, the name across the front of the jersey is not that important to me we, we've got a game plan that we've got to go try to take advantage of I uh, want to show up and, and play hard and play well um, but it is a formidable opponent that we're playing on the road it's a long trip uh, we're going to be in the bus for a while hopefully you know as short as possible not quite as long as uh, Wednesday um, but then we're yeah going on the road to play a really good team so um, we'll lay it out there I'm sure we will um, and uh, we'll see what happens yeah it's game two of a difficult three game stretch in USA South Conference play and you know the other dynamic after you know several weeks of a winter break and sort of you know the team being you know focused in many ways on basketball exclusively is now classes have started back yep. up and you know so there, there's more responsibility on these student athletes plate yep they got to get back in the swing so classes today so they had yeah jump back in with classes and then practice um you know they'll get a, a half day break tomorrow because we'll leave around 11 30 um, to start heading to, to covenant so they'll go to their first couple classes and then miss the the next ones have to catch up from there but uh, but yeah as we get back in the swing of things it's um you know no longer they're going to be able to sleep till 11 11 30 and wake up and roll out of bed and go get something to eat uh, that was our normal schedule during the winter break um they're gonna have to get up at, at seven you know get showered and dressed and head to the calf and get there for their eight o'clock class or whatever it is so yeah getting their bodies adjusted to that is is uh is something that that um, i'm sure they're not super thrilled about but they'll they'll get used to it yeah, it's really creating a new routine it is. You know, now that uh, classes are in right. session. So a, a trip to Covenant tomorrow, Tuesday, a trip at Pfeiffer on Saturday, and then Tornado fans, Tuesday, January the 21st, 7.30 p.m., your next chance to see the men's basketball team at the Bosch versus Piedmont. Now, a little later in the show, Coach, we're going to hear from uh, two of your backcourt players, Damari Hopper and Josh Wilson. Mm -hmm. um, can you talk about those two? Um, first, let's start on the court. Yeah, well, both those guys, I mean, I'm excited for you to get to talk to them. I know you've talked to them before. Um, I think both those guys have really, really super hearts about what, they, uh, what they're about. Um, I trust both of those guys, uh, you know, to babysit my kids if I ever needed them to do that. Um, they're both great people. I think they're about the right things. I think they're high character guys, um, and they want the team to be successful, whatever that means from them, um, and they're willing to do. You know, uh, Hop is a senior, and he came here as a freshman and, um, and, and did not play at all as a freshman. Um, it worked really, really hard between his freshman and sophomore year to improve his game. Didn't play a lot early in his sophomore year, but then end of his sophomore year was playing a little bit and then got some more minutes. He was playing really well and then has now been a starter as a junior and a senior. I think that just goes straight to his work, e work ethic and how hard he wanted uh, you know, to be out there on the floor. But um, he's a great intangible guy for us, um, plays with lots of energy and really does whatever the team needs him to do to be successful. Um, Josh is very similar in that intangible aspect. He, he plays really hard. 
Uh, Josh is really smart. I, I usually am seeing him in the right place, both offensively and defensively. He uh, knows where he's supposed to be and can really do that. Uh, he's another hard worker. He's one of the stronger guys we have on the team. Works hard in the weight room um, as well and has continued to try to expand his game offensively. Defensively, he's really good. He's good on the ball. He's good communicating. He knows where he's supposed to be. He's physical around the basket, can rebound. Offensively, he's good with his back to the basket, um, and he's working on expanding his perimeter game to where he can be a little more effective there. Um, but both those guys, super people. Um, definitely glad they're in the program. We'll certainly miss Hop, but I'm thankful to have Josh for another couple years. Now, I've asked Josh about this on the show because, you know, you, you can't help but look at the roster of the Tornadoes men's basketball team and notice there's a player, Josh Wilson, who's in the house now, from Eagle River, Alaska. Yeah. I'd like to learn it from your perspective. Okay. You know, um, how does one from Eagle River, Alaska, end up playing college basketball in Brevard, North Carolina? So Josh emailed us, um, emailed Co uh, KJ, Coach Johnson, our former assistant, and, and um, said, you know, hey, I'm looking to go to, to school in the States. I've got some family in North Carolina. You know, what do you think? And we watched his film, thought he did some really good things, and said, absolutely, we'd be interested. So when you make your way this way, uh, we'd love for you to swing by and visit and go from there. So uh, he and his folks booked a trip to, I think they flew into Charlotte, went and visited a handful of schools. We were one of them. Um, you know, I think that... Um, there was a, a great personal connection with Josh because um, I lived in Eagle River, Alaska for a year and a half. Um, and so when he came on the visit, I said, so um, uh, where in Eagle River do you live? He kind of described where it was. And I said, yeah, I, I know where that is. I, I lived there for a year and a half. And so uh, he was very wow, I, I kept the chances? I kept that under my hat. I, I didn't, he didn't know that till he got on campus. But my father being in the military, we lived in Alaska for three years. So I lived a year and a half on Eagle River and a year and a half at Fort Richardson, which is really close by to Eagle River. So uh, we were able to talk about Chugiak High School. Um, you know, he's still got some Chugiak gear that he wears. And I did some basketball camps at Chugiak. I was fourth and fifth grade when I was there. So um, I think that personal connection certainly helped. And he was um, uh, shocked to be all the way in Brevard, North Carolina, and be talking to somebody that, that knew some of the things that, that he lived with, uh, you know, in Alaska. And so... Um, that's been a fun connection to have and, and uh, just to keep going. But, um, you know, from there he went back home and um, we continued to recruit him. And at the end of the day he decided that he felt like this was the right fit and here he is. Very good. Well, we're, we're thrilled that he found his way to Brevard, North Carolina, as I'm sure you are, mm -hmm. Coach. Uh, before I let you go, do want to mention the JV men's basketball team, a big victory over the weekend over Gardner Webb, 82 to 76. Now the JV team is led by Miles Leathers, yep. who's a you know a sensational player here for Brevard College, and now in his first year as assistant coach um, under your guidance, uh, Coach Burgess. Can you talk a little bit about Coach Leathers and the JV program? Yeah, I mean it's a great deal that, that that we have with it. I mean I think it gives those guys, you know, seven or eight guys that don't get to play a lot, you know, at the varsity level, it gives them a chance to get out there and play. I mean they practice every day with us. We don't separate the groups and practice differently or anything like that. Everybody practices together. So, um, you know, they don't get the, the minutes in games that some of these other guys do. So this is an opportunity for them to put a uniform on and get out there and play with referees and things like that. And for Miles, it's a chance for him to, mm -hmm. to kind of call the shots. Um, so he's out there and he's, you know, calling timeouts when he needs timeouts. He's making subs when he needs to make subs and just kind of getting the feel for what it's like to make those decisions. Um, so I, I think it's a great developmental opportunity for both the guys that are playing uh, just to kind of see some of the benefits and some of the things that they've been working on through the course of the year. But then obviously Miles as well, just to be able to get out there and kind of call the shots, draw things up on grease boards, all those things that, um, you know, just the more times you do it, the, 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 the more comfortable you are at it. So, uh, yeah, proud of them, um, you know, for winning that game. Uh, they got one game left on Thursday um, at home and, um, um, then that'll be it for the JV schedule. Very good. Well, congratulations to that group and uh, great work by that JV men's basketball team. Well, Coach, good luck at Covenant uh, and at Pfeiffer over the weekend. Uh, we'll see you back here at Tornado Talk next Monday. And then, again, fans, Tuesday, January 21st, uh, come on out to the Boschford Gymnasium, 7.30 p.m., Brevard versus Piedmont. Uh, thanks again, Coach, and uh, we look forward to talking to Damari and Josh now. Sounds good. Thanks for having me. All right, head coach Lee Burgess of the men's basketball program catching us up on all things Tornadoes men's basketball. And again, Tornadoes be in action on Tuesday at Covenant, Saturday at Pfeiffer, and then back home at the Bosch 
versus Piedmont, 7.30 p.m. on Tuesday. And as these two make their way into the coach's corner here at Dugan's Pub for another edition of Tornado Talk, these two veterans of the program, you know. It Great to be joined now by my check, my check. Damari Hopper <coughs> and Josh Wilson. Yes, sir. Gentlemen, How thanks you for doing? joining the show. How you doing? Good to see you guys again. Yes, sir. All right. Well, Josh, we'll, we'll start with you because okay. Coach has told the story. And, you know, in case people don't remember, mm -hmm. you know, you came on the show as a freshman last season and yes, you sir. told the whole story. Let's, let's go through it one more time. Okay. How does someone from Eagle River, Alaska, end up here in the mountains of North Carolina? You know, uh, every day I think about that. Um, like I don't understand how I got here either. I just be sending out emails, and then KJ uh, responded to me, and I came for a visit, and I liked it. And it's nothing like it's something like home. Uh, still the mountainry is nice. Yeah, and then Demari, I see you nodding your head. Uh, you're happy this guy's here, huh? Yeah, it's my guy right here. <laughs> now, Demari, if we can take things on the court, you know, a tough loss this last mm -hmm. time out at Berea, but a chance to shake it off, you know, beginning tomorrow yes, at Covenant. Can you talk about sort of, you know, the practices you guys have had since that last game? You had the weekend off in terms of games, so maybe some more time to, to get prepared and, and start to get ready and um, how you guys are feeling heading in tomorrow's matchup. Yeah, Covenant is a good team. Like, the way they play, they, they, make, they make, you, make you go hard. So we've been prepping in practice people been getting in the gym on their own just trying to get better day by day to get ready for the game similar thoughts on that yes sir just like uh Damari said they're a good team and uh we're coming out uh trying to get this win uh, just uh get the upset yeah they're five and oh in the usa south conference so but a, a big opportunity for the tornadoes to you know make a statement here and to, and to get the momentum on y'all side as you continue to take on the usa south usa south is a very competitive yes. men's basketball conference and you guys are in the heart of that that battle there can you kind of talk about that once you turn the page from the non-conference part of the season how are things different now that you're in usa south conference play well we has we them had some very close and tough games like heartbreaking losses but like every game we come out hard we come out to compete and like we can you know, on any given day anybody can be beat and that's how we feel we can be anybody so it's just just going out there and hooping every day just like you said anybody can be beat and uh, these games matter and we want these wins yeah and so much of it and I you know I hear your coach emphasizing this point comes down to defense yeah. right can you guys talk about that? It's the it's the part of the game that, you know, hard work gives you the, the results in so many ways, and people don't realize how much preparation you all put in on the defensive end. Can you talk about defense from that perspective? You know, what are the kind of drills you guys might be working on during practice? What does it take to be a good defender? The biggest thing in defense is effort. You gotta wanna, you gotta take it personally. You gotta wanna get stops. You gotta like it's just all in. Your, it's all mental. Like it's effort. everything is effort with defense. So we we come out before practice. We do lane slides. We do all that, all that to get our like our legs loose, and then we guard. We guard a lot. And stuff. Just like you said, we do lane slides, and uh, you gotta take pride in what you do. And if you get scored on, you gotta take that serious. And I, no one likes to get scored on, so you gotta take that into account. All right, if I heard you right, you said landslides. Landslides. Okay. Hey, For the audience who might not know what in the world mm -hmm. that is when it comes to basketball, can you guys explain it? Well, a coach put about 20 seconds on the clock, and he, he just blow the whistle, and you got to just go back and forth until the time run out and have your legs burning, but get get you la moving lateral quick. Yeah, and it's the kind of thing when, you know, late in the second half, yeah. it pays off, right? That yeah, kind sir. of uh, that kind of hard work, and a lot of you all's games have come down to kind of who wants yeah. it more down the stretch. Right. You know, we saw that in, in a few of your wins, yeah. you know, in some of these close battles, and so I, I'd imagine that kind of, you know, preparation pays off. Yeah, well, Damari, this is your senior year. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I know these, these careers, like, you know, in a blink of the, n the eye, next thing you know, you're yeah. a senior. Um, we'll talk again before senior night and all that, but if we can touch on it a little. You know, have you had the chance, you know, maybe the holidays was a good chance to kind of kind of reflect a little bit, um, to kind of think back and like, wow, you know, I'm a, I'm a senior now, yeah. and, you know, what a run it's been. Yeah, it's been crazy. It's been a long four years, but 
I wouldn't trade it for nothing. Awesome. And Josh, I, I'd imagine, you know, not just Damari, but also, you know, seniors like Levi Lamb and, and others, you know, the upperclassmen. Um, can you talk about how they've maybe helped you, you know, as one of the younger players? Um, it's just matching their uh, work ethic. You know, they come in every day working hard and being a part of the starting lineup. I want to match their energy, be as good as them, and put in the work as much as they do. Because they're always in the gym getting up shots, whether that's in practice, outside of practice. And I just try to match that as much as I can. And Damari, and I'm going to ask you the same question, Josh, so you'll have a minute to think about it. Now you've been here four years, and you've experienced Brevard College from a student athlete perspective. If you had the chance to talk to an incoming recruit, which I'm sure you do from time to time, what are the things you would tell him why Brevard College makes sense to come and play college basketball? Um, it's a... We like, we're a brotherhood, first off. Like, everything we do, we do it together. We play hard in the school. I, I said like this, if if you want to, talking to a recruit, if you want to hoop, this is the perfect school for you because it's, it's like, basically it's hoop all you really have if you like, if you come to the school, unless you like do all, unless you like uh, hiking and stuff. But I'm not really into that, so. It, it fits me perfectly because I, I just stay in the gym 24-7. Allows you just to, yeah. you know, stay focused and yeah, do what sir. you need to do. Just like he said, like, there's nothing to really do around here, so you have a lot of time to get into the gym, so you can come and work in your game day in and day out. Very good. Well, before I let you guys go, I'll give you the chance, if you'd like to give a shout-out or a thank you to anybody maybe back home or who might be tuning in at some point on this program, you know, who may have helped you along the way, the floor is yours, uh, Damari. Uh, shout out my Dukes <laughs> and now my brothers. Shout out to my parents and Coach Jock and my brothers. All right, last thing. I said I was about to let you go, but there's some football game on tonight, you know, Clemson LSU oh, yeah. for the national championship. Um, Coach gave me a little heads up that you guys might have a rooting interest. <laughs> Do you care to share that? Uh, I'm going a, I'm to a go with LSU. I'm a tr true LSU fan, a huge fan. So, you know, we're going to get the dub today. All right, so there's a there's a real LSU fan right there. Yes, and so <laughs> Damari agrees with you. So we'll see what happens a little later tonight. Well, guys, thanks for joining the show. Good luck on that road trip tomorrow um, against Covenant. And uh, hopefully, you know, you guys will come on back here with the W and we'll, we'll see you down the road. We'll be back at the Bosch next Tuesday. Be great to play in front of the home uh, fans again. But meanwhile, business trip <laughs> at sir. Covenant uh, tomorrow. Thanks, guys, for joining the show. Great Thank job. You. Thanks for having us. All right, Damari Hopper and Josh Wilson. Two of the top backcourt players for the Tornadoes. Getting ready for that trip at Covenant on Tuesday, tomorrow, in Lookout Mountain, Georgia. Formidable opponent, 5-0 and in the conference, Covenant. And we'll shift gears to talk a little women's basketball as we'll catch up in just a couple moments here with head women's basketball coach Donald Hudson. And joined now by women's basketball coach Donald Hudson. Coach, What's thanks going for on? joining the program. Thanks for having me. Great to see you. You know, it's one year ago at this time, we were doing the same thing, yeah, hanging absolutely. out at, at Dugan's Pub prior national to the championship. national championship game. Clemson LSU tonight. It was Clemson Alabama last year. Mm -hmm. But first things first, we got to talk some hoops. So to recap, viewers or listeners, two games this past week yes, uh, for the Tornadoes. The first one was back on Wednesday evening of last week at the Boschmer Gymnasium. Shakira Thompson, who's going to be a guest on the show, and in a uh, little later in the show, scored a career high 21 points, a career best seven made three pointers, uh, ultimately a 66 44 victory over Agnes Scott. Uh, for viewers who may not have been able to witness that game against Agnes Scott, big picture, how to go for you? Yeah, it, it was a game we kind of got off to a slow start on the offensive end. Um, they played a zone and they kind of packed it in and they made you launch over the top. They made you launch over the top and early on our shots were not going, but we were getting decent looks. So we felt good about everything. And so on the first time out, we talked about continue to take these same shots. They're gonna go, we shoot in this gym every morning. So these shots are gonna go eventually, but the biggest thing when you're not making shots is you gotta defend. 
You really mm. got to defend. You got to defend. So that's something that we harped on, and we continue to take the same shots, work some inside-out stuff, and the shots begin to fall. Um, like you alluded to in the prelude, like um, Shakira made seven threes, and that's not unordinary. Like she lights it up every day in practice. So that like seeing her make it seven threes is a big deal, but we see it every day in practice. So um, I have the utmost confidence in every shot that she takes. Right? If she has her feet set and it's a good pass and she's locked in on the rim, I feel good about it. I feel really good about it. Um, um, seven of 12, that, that's huge. That's huge. I wish she would have been able to tie that record or break the record. And she has another year here, another year and a half to try to get that done. And um, I've challenged her on that. I, I would love to see her break that record. But it was a game where we, we battled. We battled. We defended okay. Back and forth game early in the first half. And we kind of pulled away from them late. Um, well coached team. Um, Agnes Scott, well coached team. Um, much credit to Coach Albie Biggs, what he's done with that program since he's you know, inherited it. Um, and they're, they're searching for their first one. I think they'll get it soon. I think they'll get it soon. But I'm just glad it wasn't against us. Glad we were able to get that win. You mentioned Shakira's seven three-pointers, second most in school history. Anna Lee Bollinger, uh, who graduated this um, past year, a, just a legendary Tornado uh, student athlete, uh -huh. has that record. She does. Uh, eight three-pointers, November 29, 2017. Can you catch folks up a little bit about A.B.? Because when we saw her last year, she was getting started with mm -hmm. a coaching career, and now she's on her way. Yeah, yeah, she's up at Averitt. She's up at Averitt University, and it's been weird. It's been weird because I've seen her out on the road, and we've been recruiting, and she has the blue and gold stuff on it. It just looks weird on her. I'm used to seeing her with the Brevard blue and white. But um, she's doing a really good job, really good job, and I enjoy every time we get to talk. Like She's been to campus a few times um, before this season started, and – she calls me for advice, and we talk, and that makes me feel good. It makes me feel good. Like, she'll call me with things that she hasn't experienced yet. You know, and I've been in this profession long enough to experience some things, and, and I love the fact that I can help her with that. Anything that I can help her with to help her grow in this profession, I would love to because she's going to be really good at it. She's going to be really good at it. She has the mind for it. She has the temperament for it, and she's just a great person. She's a good person, and that's the biggest thing because the wins and losses are great, but that stuff isn't going to show up on our tombstones. You know, it's just going to be about how you affected people's lives, mm. and I think she's going to be really good at that. Yeah, and, and prior to starting this coaching career at Averitt, she was able to rub off on a lot of the current mm -hmm. players who had the chance to play with her. Mm -hmm. um, Absolutely. You kind of see some of that now that she's a year removed and she was such an important part of your program. Yes, sir. You know, hey, I see a little bit of Anna Lee in this one or mm -hmm. that one or kind of how the team's um, yeah. going about their business. Yeah, we definitely miss her out there, but the thing that she's really good about is keeping in contact with the team. Like, Dub, she'll FaceTime and they'll talk on the phone. Uh, the girls will come to my office. Hey, I talked to AB today. Hey, tell her I said hello. And I'll talk with her, and she'll tell me that she talked to a couple of the players. So it's really good to know that she's still keeping in contact with the program. Um, cause that's one thing that when I got this job, I wanted to make sure anybody that comes to my program understands that it's not just a basketball thing while you're here. This is a lifelong bond that we build um, while you're here. You know, and it just feels good to be able to keep up with her and see her parents out on the road and everything. It was, it's it's a family. It's a family mm. thing, and just the fact that she still keeps up with us, that means a lot to me. Well, after that win over Agnes Scott, the Tornadoes hit the road to Macon, Georgia, to face Wesleyan, and a number that just kind of blows your mind if you're a women's basketball fan, Tornadoes with a school record 73 rebounds. So just kind of a bizarre game a lot of the numbers as you as you look at them here the game ends up going into overtime the tornadoes with a 15 to 6 advantage in overtime to to win this contest i know it was a um kind of a uh, strange deal at least from our perspective as we're following the numbers yeah. but can yeah. you catch folks up who might not have been able to watch the live stream or or, or really pay attention to what was going on there in wesleyan it was a weird game to start with but like in the game while you're in the game you're not really you notice there are a lot of shots being missed, but you don't really know. You don't know how many rebounds your team has. You know that we're going to get it. You can tell Destiny, she's on the roll. She's got like the last three or four rebounds. And then you get the box score at the end of the game, and you see 73 rebounds. And that speaks to the kind of game that it was. Mm. It was a very, like, gritty fight. Like, neither team could throw the ball in the ocean field. It, it, it was amazing. Like, some of the shots mm. that we missed, like, point-blank range, wide-open threes. We missed layups in transition, and that kind of goes back to the Agnes Scott game. In, in the huddle, we talked about, okay, ladies, they're not going right now. 
but the thing that we have to continue to do is make sure theirs don't go as well. Mm. And, and that's what we did. That's what we did. Um, I think it was a three-point game at the half. Um, they made a run on us in the second half. They turned the pressure up a little bit, went to a 2-2-1 press, and we kind of turned it over. We did not do well taking care of the basketball. We had 29 turnovers in the game. That's way too many, way too many. So they make their run, and they tie it up, and we, and we go in a run, and it's a tie game going into overtime. And in that huddle, I looked at everybody in the eye, and I challenged the team. You keep them at 50. You're good enough to keep that team at 50 because it went in halftime 50-50. Um, they end up scoring six points, but we definitely locked in to them in overtime defensively and that was the reason why we won that game and uh, I haven't shared this with the team but I was extremely proud of them in that overtime mm. you know it's a game that we struggled to play and put the ball in the hole but they showed some grit and showed some fight in that overtime and we got out of there with a win got out of there with a win yeah can you talk about that coach when that overtime situation mm -hmm. comes up and you know it can go a lot of ways. You can be the team that was sort of in the lead, and then mm -hmm. another team comes back, and now suddenly they're in overtime, mm -hmm. and it feels like that, that team that came back has all the momentum. You can be that team that worked their way back into it, yeah. and then you're feeling good. Yeah. Regardless of the situation, can you talk about resetting things that, heading into overtime? That's exactly what it is. You hit it right on the head right there. You just have to, whether you just blew the lead or you cut into the lead, you have to come into that huddle and – just reset. Okay, ladies, 0-0. Zero, zero. Nothing, nothing else matters. Nothing that happened in the regulation matters right now. Let's go be the best version of ourselves that we can be for these next five minutes and see where it gets us. And that's what we did. That's what we did. Um, we won that quarter 15-6. to six. Um, I think they scored their first basket around two and a half minutes. They hit a pick and pop three with their four man and um, she's kind of a matchup problem big mm. hit that can post it and also shoot it with range um, they used her up top and came off a screen we didn't switch it correctly they threw it back to her she threw in the three but by the time that happens we were already up 10 points you know so that really didn't affect us that much um, but that's that's what it is you just got to reset you got to reset put everything out throw everything else out the window and go be the best version of yourself for that five minutes that you can be couple more of those wild numbers. Destiny Williams with a career-high 21 rebounds. That mm -hmm. breaks the Brevard College women's basketball single-game record for rebounds. Deja Riddick with a career-high 18 rebounds, seven of which were on the offensive glass. But it all adds up to an overtime win over Wesleyan and back-to-back -back wins for yeah. the Tornadoes, yeah. uh, which is, is big to get two in a row. And it's something that we needed. It's something that we desperately needed. Like we had won a few games without getting in the win column, and we – we're able to beat these two teams and something that we need. Now we can try to build upon it. We've got a really good Maryville team coming in tomorrow, and they're playing well. It's going to be a test. We're going to be tested on both ends of the floor. There's going to be some adversity at some point in the game, and we're going to have to meet it head on as a team. Head on as a team. Don't run from it. We're going to attack it. we got to attack it, but we really got to be good defensively tomorrow. If we're not on our coverages and everything, that team can come here and put up 80 points tomorrow. Mm. And they're, they're that potent offensively. They have some players that can put it in the basket. So we really got to lock into the scout, lock into our coverages, and really make them work for everything. Contain every bounce. Every bounce matters. Every pass matters. Every rebound. Like everything. We can't look past anything with a team like this. Because the moment you think about the next five minutes, now you're down 10 points because you've kind of gotten yourself out of the moment and you've, you're not locked in. So we got to stay locked in for every moment of the game tomorrow. 11 and 4 overall, 4 and 2 mm -hmm. in the USA South Conference. The record very much speaks for itself uh -huh. for Maryville. That game's 6 o'clock tomorrow. That's Tuesday at the Boschimer Gymnasium. Now, school's back in session, mm -hmm. and so a couple things come to mind. One, for the student athletes and for your players, you know, mm -hmm. back to a, you know, normal routine <laughs> or, you know, yeah. back to the, you know, y yeah. y early wake up calls and uh -huh. all that kind of thing. Absolutely. And then also from the on the court perspective, the student section will yeah. be back in the house at the Boschmer Gymnasium, yeah, hopefully creating some some home court a atmosphere. Can you talk about how you know I, I felt it today walking around campus, first day with uh, school back in session, mm -hmm. how the energy you know here at Brevard College is different? Yeah. yeah, like you go from maybe two or three weeks with nobody around, nobody around. So it's pretty dead campus. There's nobody in the cafe. The cafe's not open. Bill's boiler shop. It's not open or anything. You just don't see anyone. And then you get everybody back, and it's like, okay, this is what we're used to. And what that does for us, like back in class, um, that puts us back at 6 a.m. for practice. Um, it's something that we started this year to kind of give ourselves more time in the day. Um, on, our, on our team, we have a few players that work jobs. And to kind of get away from scheduling headaches, uh, we just wake up and we'll go early in the morning. That way when we, we're done, they're done with me for the day. Now they, now they have class. 
pretty sure they get naps in. You got time to do your homework, come get a weightlifting session in. And the ones that work don't have to worry about scheduling their schedule around our practice schedule. Um, so, like, for the first week or two, it was kind of tough, kind of tough. You could notice the girls coming in kind of dragging a little bit. But now everybody's used to it. Like, your body kind of wakes you up on its own, you know. Like a joke that we have on the team is like when we don't have practice, everybody's still up around 5 o'clock in the morning because mm. that's what they're used to, and um, it's kind of hard to go back to sleep. But I think it builds good habits, and I think it builds good, good habits for us going forward. Um, so that's something that we're going to continue to do. Very good, Coach. Well, fans, hope you can head on out to the Bosford Gymnasium tomorrow if you're watching the show live. That's Tuesday, 6 p.m. versus Maryville. And then another opportunity to see the women's basketball team this Saturday, 2 p.m. versus Berea. Another yeah. formidable team, 14-2 yeah. and two overall, 7-0 uh-huh. and oh in the conference. So yeah. two They're tough ones. Basketball. So fans, come on out. You know, th- these ladies deserve your support, and uh, certainly it helps, you know, Absolutely. as far as creating that home court advantage. Absolutely. Well, Coach, we'll let you go. Um, but there's a football game. You can hear Dugan's Pub starting to, you know, uh, get a little, you know, a little more excited <laughs> around here. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you go and enjoy the atmosphere. But meanwhile, we'll have two of your players coming on now, Shakira Thompson and Krista Davis. Coach, good luck tomorrow. We'll see you Thank at the you. Boschmer Gymnasium. I appreciate it. Great job as always. Thank you, Coach. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right. Head Coach Donald Hudson previewing tomorrow's big women's basketball game against Maryville and then Berea on Saturday. So two formidable USA South Conference opponents coming into the Boschimer Gymnasium. And great to be joined by these two. And it seems like the theme of the night, veterans of tornado talk. Two more that very comfortable here in the coach's corner. Hello, Krista. Good to see Krista Davis, senior center from Charlotte, North Carolina, and junior guard Shakira Thompson from Atlanta, Georgia. Ladies, thanks for joining the program. Well, do you want to, before we get into what's coming up this week in terms of your schedule, review what happened this past week? And about a week ago, in fact, it was you know maybe five days ago, last Wednesday, this one right here, Shakira Thompson just absolutely shot the lights out. Seven made three-pointers, second most in school history, uh, one shy of the record set by Anna Lee Bollinger uh, in 2017. It all added up to a 66-44 win over Agnes Scott. Um, I saw you nod your head, Krista, from your perspective. Was that about it during a game? Because I know she's done it, you know, in practice and scrimmages and things like that. But is that about as hot as you've seen a shooter shoot it? Yeah, and Shakira, can you talk about it a little pro- from your perspective? You know, um, you know, were you feeling it a little more than usual? Very good. And do you, you know, as a three-point specialist on the on the offensive side of the ball, you know, I hear this a lot. You know, if I'm cold, I have to just keep shooting. Is it that? Is it? Do you have that mentality yourself? And, Krista, one thing I noticed out of, out of your game down in the low post is, you know, both you and Avery have significant passing ability. And when you kind of know that, hey, the three-point ball is, you know, dropping, are you even looking for those perimeter players that much more? Now, the couple nights later in Macon, Georgia, a school record 73 rebounds were pulled down. Yes. An unbelievable number, you know, just jaw dropping. You know, 73 rebounds in a win, a 65-56 victory over Wesleyan College 
it, it took overtime mm -hmm. to do it. But can we start about this rebounding number to begin with? Did you guys realize what kind of stats you were putting up, or mm -mm, you're probably no. focused on the game? Yeah, we were focused on the game, but, you know, coaches always like crash, crash, crash. So it just came second nature. Yeah, it's always a competition between Deja and Destiny to see who's going to get the most rebounds. Mm -hmm. So that kind of gives them the, a rebounding edge as well. Well, you said it. Destiny Williams with a career-high 21 rebounds. Deja Riddick with a career-high 18 rebounds, including seven offensive yeah. boards. Mm -hmm. And it took overtime, as I mm -hmm. mentioned. You guys got it done in overtime, a 15-6 to six advantage to get the victory. I asked your coach about it, but I'd like to hear it from you all's mm -hmm. perspective. How tough is that, you know, after playing four quarters of basketball to say, hey, I got to dig deep. Five more minutes of play, mm -hmm. overtime's coming. Yeah, well, um, after Bree hit the last layup before we went into overtime, you know, we kind of thought we had it. But unfortunately, you know, we had to go into overtime, which is okay. Um, we just had to really lock in to each defender and know our personnel. Like, we, could, we had no time or, like, no space for uh, mistakes. Mm -hmm. It's pretty much what she said. No mistakes could be made in the, in the uh, overtime because like that would have like killed our momentum that we had going since mm -hmm. the fourth quarter. Well, you guys got it done in that overtime, so great job kind of digging deep and getting that done. Now, before we turn the page to what's coming up later this week, would like viewers to get to know you all even mm -hmm. further. You guys have been on the show before, but mm -hmm. always love hearing kind of the backstories. And Krista, we'll start with you, your senior mm -hmm. season. You know, yeah. congratulations on that. You know, um, we just started up the spring semester, so coming yeah. down the home stretch here. But senior center from Charlotte. North Carolina. Um, can you talk a little bit about your journey as far as how you found Brevard? Uh, well, my freshman year I went to Warren Wilson, which is pretty local. It's like an hour. Sure. Um, I kind of wanted to stay within the mountains, but Warren Wilson really wasn't for me. I reached out to Coach Hud. He got me in right away, had a visit with him, and ever since, you know, he's a really great coach. Like, he's turned me around a lot as a player. I came in not really as an offensive player. Never really tried to score much, but after, you know, I'm putting the ball up more than I usually do. So. Very good. Well, we're, we're glad you found your way here, that's for sure, Krista. And Shakira, junior from Atlanta, Georgia, um, same question. You know, how'd you find Brevard? Well, we kind of looked all over the place, like mainly in Georgia, but I wanted to kind of get away from home, so my dad kind of reached out to coach and got me on board like we came and visit over the summer and I, we, I, I really like the school the atmosphere was a lot different from what i'm used to very good well business at hand coming mm -hmm. up starting tomorrow mm -hmm. a matchup versus maryville a formidable maryville team with really good numbers behind them and a strong record but mm -hmm. certainly you know, not a stretch to think that the Tornadoes can't come away with a victory. I know that's the mentality of you alls. Mm -hmm. I believe it as well. But the question is this. What's the key to winning tomorrow against Maryville? I would say we played great against them in the first half. The third quarter, they kind of threw his own at us, which I think the third quarter score was like 19-5, to five, which pushed us back a lot, and we lost by like 15. So there's the game right there. So we just have to come out strong in the third quarter. We can't leave our game in the locker room at all. We have to come out 100%. Yeah, and I think it starts in warm-ups. Like, we always, we're always kind of, like, low in energy and warm-ups. And when we, when we actually have high energy, we come out in the beginning of the game and, like, really throw the p first punch. So I think that's key to winning the game. Now, this time you will be playing in front of your home fans at the Boschmer Gymnasium. Mm -hmm. And unlike last week's game, mm -hmm. which was played while school was out of session, mm -hmm. school is now back in session. Yeah. So we'll have a student section <laughs> rocking yeah. tomorrow. How, from your perspective, because it's hard for people like me to understand what you mm -hmm. guys are going through out there on the court, mm -hmm. how important is that to have a loud crowd behind you at home? I think it's very important, you know, energy, you know, the positive comments, you know, them having our backs, you know, them just giving us that extra hype that we, ne you know, we need. You know, we have 14, how many players? 13, 14 players. When we could have 30, 40, you know, extra fans, you know, it's just amazing. You know? And I feel like that they, they really challenge us. Like, they'll be telling us, oh, yeah, we need another, we need another one. So, like, we have to kind of go at the team that we're playing and try 
give them, give them a show. Very good. Well, I want to invite all viewers and listeners of this program, mm -hmm. head on out there to the Boschmer Gymnasium tomorrow, Tuesday at 6 p.m. And then another opportunity if you're unable to make it or if you want even more women's basketball, Saturday mm -hmm. at 2 p.m. versus Berea. Um, ladies, before I let you go, I always like giving student athletes this opportunity. Anybody you'd like to give a shout out to or thank uh, who may have helped you you know get to this point um, who might be viewing at some point yeah my parents I mean if it wasn't for them I wouldn't be here you know Bavar is a really expensive school so <laughs> I feel like you know they really they helped me a lot very nice yeah the same as well my parents and my brother he really he really pushes my buttons <laughs> but, but I mean it, it helps me in the long run sounds like some of that tough love huh? yeah <laughs> very good well Shakira, congratulations on that individual performance, by the way. That was Thank just you. awesome for us to f be able to follow that, that you were draining all those uh, three-pointers. Krista, congratulations on you in your senior season now, And uh, but I know you guys have so much more um, ahead of you still, mm -hmm. and uh, you're focused one game at a time mentality on tomorrow's matchup against Maryville. So good luck up there at Maryville in, in Tennessee. Um, or actually here at the Boschmer Gymnasium when Maryville comes to town tomorrow. Ladies, thanks for joining the program. Great to have you as thanks always. Thanks for having us. Thank you for having us. All right, Shakira Thompson and Krista Davis from the Brevard College women's basketball team. Great to have those two on the program. And previewing tomorrow's big game, Tuesday, 6 p.m. at the Bosch. The Tornadoes will host Maryville. And hope you can make it out there to the Boschmer Gymnasium on Tuesday and also on Saturday at 2 p.m. versus Berea. So women's basketball action later this week. And join now here in the Coach's Corner at Dugan's Pub. Very glad to be joined and officially welcome her to Brevard College. Newly minted head softball coach for Brevard College, Robin Rohr. Coach Rohr, <laughs> thanks for joining the program. Of course. Well, it's, it's a thrill to have you on here and to formally introduce you to NATO Nation, you know, <laughs> as we call it, and um, welcome you to Brevard College of Brevard, North Carolina. I know you started officially about a week ago, yeah. so, you know, you've, I'm sure you've got a thousand things going on, so thanks for fitting in this program through it all but can you talk about since you've you know made the move down here from Minnesota um, to Brevard North Carolina and here at Brevard College how has it been so far it's been wonderful I got here and noticed that right away the dirt field needed some work so um, I've been out there rain or sunshine and working hard with the maintenance and um, trying to get that field together so that we can definitely at least practice on that before we can you know make that a playing field um, this year will still be on the turf, of course, but I have been working really hard on making sure that that is up and ready. As for kind of getting settled in, I've absolutely enjoyed my coaching staff and um, the athletic department has been very supportive. And, you know, I just really like the area. I fit in just fine here, so <laughs> I'm loving it. Great to hear. Well, if we can educate viewers a little bit about your background, sure. um, you know, and let's start in the sport of softball. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about first your playing career and how that ultimately led you to becoming a coach? Of course, yes. Um, I was born into softball. My whole family played it. My dad was a coach for 26 years. Um, I played both at Tech College and St. Catherine University, which was a D3 school. Um, my background was primarily as a shortstop, but I also was a catcher. I was at my home base when I was actually hitting. Um, that was my biggest threat. That's where I had most of my statistics throughout my college career. As an Army brat, I traveled through high schools, so I played in Arizona, I played in Minnesota, I've been playing all over and I'm really lucky to have done that because there is different types of softball and that that is what really led me into coaching because then I'm not only able to uh, implement what goes on with the technique and the talent that you can get but also teaching a culture and teaching you know how to become a human after the career is completed so very good and you know, Dakota County Technical College in Rosemount Minnesota uh, most recently you were the assistant coach there and uh, as you mentioned St. Catherine University in St. Paul Minnesota a big part of your background mm -hmm. the one common thread here is the state of Minnesota now you're in 
Brevard, North Carolina, in the western North Carolina mountains. And I remember talking to the baseball coaches about this subject who are from Pennsylvania. And almost strategically or purposely as baseball coaches wanted to move south because it's easier to have success and it puts you at a, a certain advantage in the sport of baseball if you're in warmer weather. It mm -hmm. just kind of you know makes sense when you think of the college uh, baseball scene. Does the same apply to college softball? I believe so. I think for me, you know, it is something where you go south if you want to play more year round, but it's not going to inhibit you in the northern states either. Um, we have the domes and so it's just a different type of game and so really in reality here it's the same thing that we have on the turf field just no big bubble above you um so i'm very excited about it because you get an earlier season you get a later season you get better falls um you're not worried about shoveling off your field you're more concerned about making sure that there's no rain puddles so well the season's just around the corner you know the second week of february the games begin here at brevard college so i'm sure you're on a fast track to get your team up to speed can you catch folks up on sort of the schedule thus far you know i'd imagine you've had the chance to meet the team and things like that but when does practice start and where's the team at as far as preparations for 2020 of course yes so um we just finalized our schedule actually this afternoon so we had a little bit of uh, conflict with uh, our first games actually and so we actually reached out to a new tech school cleveland community college will be our first um exhibition game which will be held on february 8th and so we'll be starting that one off right off from the start, which is exciting um, for both colleges as they just st started their softball program as well. Um, February 2nd, we start our practices. We are going to be running two-a-days um, for our first week. Um, the girls are going to be shocked as our first Thursday practice is actually with the Marine Corps. We're going to be doing a boot camp to really kind of get the team together and understand wow. who do we want in our fighting holes and who do we want to really support. So they're really excited. Uh, my assistant coach, Jenna George, she's going to actually be joining us on February 6th. So that's a quick turnaround for our games. However, I do feel that um, the girls, the coaches, and the game is going to come to us very quickly. And um, with Brevard 100% supporting us and getting us to a season, we're going to have a very successful season. Now, you mentioned Jenna George, who's an exciting addition as well to the Brevard College mm -hmm. coaching staff. Um, she comes from Minnesota also, and I know you have experience from her, who was a very prolific. When we started to look up Jenna George's numbers, you know, um, uh, on the softball field, it's it's the ones that kind of, you know, open your eyes real quick. Can you talk about Jenna George and, you know, how successful a player she was, but also what you think she'll be able to bring as a coach now? Of course. Jenna George is the one person that has the enthusiasm that will carry you through a whole season. She is passionate about the game. She is very intelligent about the game and her statistics show it. And she has, you know, you look her up and she has that all American stature. She has that background that really carried a lot of our team. Um, she was actually two years younger than me. So I only got to play one season together at St. Catherine university and just being able to be a teammate to her, it taught me a lot just in regards to how to, you know, back up my third baseman as a shortstop and to um, see how much of a difference it is from a left-handed slapper power hitter like myself to a Jenna George, which is a mm. right-handed power hitter. And um, I'm really impressed with Jenna because she is not just a one-hit wonder. She is, across the board, has high stats. She's got it on the field. She's got it on the bat. You know, she's got it everywhere and she's very humble about it and so her approach to everything is um not about the end goal but falling in love with the process she's got her head on straight and i think that that alone is going to keep all the girls on the team with a compass pointed north <laughs> Very good. Well, we're really excited to have um, this coaching staff in place here at Brevard College and again welcome you uh, to Brevard, North Carolina. Now, before I let you go, Coach Roar, I uh, do want to talk about sort of your second career, you know, it, and it's really a fascinating one. Um, you, you have a degree in American Sign Language Interpreting from St. Catherine University and you work as an American Sign Language Interpreter 
for Convo Communications, where you facilitate communication for deaf and hard of hearing individuals via technology. Uh, mm -hmm. Just sounds like a really fulfilling, you know, um, thing that you do here. But can you kind of tell folks a little more, perhaps, how you got into this, and then also what it's all about? Yeah, so I work as a sign language interpreter. That's my abbreviated version of it. Um, so as you can see, I'm trying not to talk with my hands as I look Italian when I do, because I'm always <laughs> using my words through my hands more often than not. So I'm sure you'll be seeing that out on the field quite a bit. Um, my dream wasn't ever to interpret. I actually went into school not knowing what I wanted to do. I started out with accounting and business management. However, I am the type of person that if you see me in one spot for more than like 15 minutes, there's something wrong. I must be sick or something because I'm a busy body. I need a new environment. I need uh, motivation and ambition. And I get that through coaching, but with interpreting, I'm able to have an impact on people's lives and be someone who can facilitate communication between, between cultures. So um, yes, that looks like for technology, it's kind of like FaceTime. I get two process phone calls for um, deaf and hard of hearing people. And um, I don't see it more or less as a job. I see it as a vacation. I get to go to a vacation every day, whether it's coaching or interpreting. I'm, I'm always on vacation. It's, it's not work for me. It's fantastic. It's a great career. It's great life. Um, and it's just wonderful to me. Yeah. Very inspiring. Uh, appreciate you sharing that with us, uh, Coach Rohr. And again, congratulations on uh, the, the new position, head softball coach at Brevard College. I know you got your hands full, so I'll let you go so you can get back <laughs> at you know all your, your different duties. But uh, best of luck. We'll be talking to you throughout the season as well to really get into some of the specifics and, and certainly have a bunch of your student athletes on the program also. But thanks again. Congratulations, Coach, and uh, welcome to NATO Nation. Awesome. Thank you. All right. That was head softball coach Robin Rohr. Great to officially have her on the program and welcome her to Brevard College. Well, thank you for tuning in to another edition of Tornado Talk. I want to thank all of our guests, head men's basketball coach Lee Burgess, men's basketball co uh, student athletes Damari Hopper and Josh Wilson, head women's basketball coach Donald Hudson, we also heard from Shakira Thompson and Krista Davis from the women's basketball team. And our final guest, softball head coach Robin Rohr. want to thank our sponsors, Arby's, Jets Pizza, Holiday Inn Express, Hampton Inn, Ingalls, Mission Sports Medicine, Comporium, Pepsi, and Dugan's Pub. Women's basketball home games coming up this week. Two opportunities to see the Tornadoes beginning tomorrow, Tuesday, January 14th, 6 p.m. versus Maryville at the Bosch. It's also Sickle Cell Awareness night so come on out and support that great cause and then Saturday 2 p.m. versus Bria at the Boschmer Gymnasium and the mission that night is to support the We Back Pat initiative which is the Pat Summit Foundation next up for men's basketball trips to Covenant uh, tomorrow on Tuesday 7 30 p.m. in Lookout Mount Georgia and then at Pfeiffer 4 p.m on Saturday and then the next home game for the men's basketball team Tuesday January 21st at 7 30 p.m. versus Piedmont. Follow all the news and updates surrounding Brevard College Athletics on Twitter and Instagram at BC Tornadoes. Subscribe to Brevard College Tornadoes on YouTube. Follow Brevard College Tornadoes on SoundCloud and like Brevard College Athletics on Facebook. Be sure to follow Brevard College all one word on Flickr for all the latest photos from all Brevard College events and want to thank those behind the scenes, especially Joseph Marvin, for making tonight's program possible. Well, Dugan's Pub ready for some college football national championship action. Thank you for tuning in this evening for this edition of Tornado Talk. Go Tornadoes!